Have you ever freestyled before? And I don't mean write some lyrics down and then five minutes before you're set to record or five minutes before you're about to battle somebody, you have those lyrics memorised, no. I mean right there, in the heat of the moment, off the top of your head, genuine freestyle. Have you? Well, I have. Oi! She left the phone number in the newspaper I see her later, now I cater for her party oh, Everybody oh, look at me oh. like Ratty I am Marty hey. Back to the future, drive to DeLorean Ooh. Don't give a fuck, I am a quarry oh. From Mass Effect, I get Mass Erect You and your mother, come and inspect Zip. Yeah, it's not easy is what I'm trying to get at Which is why I can't be mad at this next character For spitting weak freestyle lyrics Because I know how difficult it can be Here we go now As far as dogs go, hip hop has got the kings of the canines covered by the likes of Snoop Dogg and DMX. But what about fictional rapping dogs? Well, you've got Poochie, I suppose. The name's Poochie D and I rock the telly. I'm half Joe Camel and a third Bonzarelli. I'm the Kung Fu hippie from Gangster City. I'm a rapping surfer, you the fool I pity. Oh, and you've also got that random one from the animated Titanic movie. Well, just leave your troubles at the door, leave your worries behind. Leave the rest up to me, you're gonna like what you find. I'll be busting the moves and I'll be busting the rhymes. We'll be busting up laughing cause it's party time. Yeah, he's known for being incredibly out of place. But then you've got this guy, Parappa, a cult PlayStation icon that would have likely been the mascot for the PS1 had these other guys not existed. I never really got a chance to play the games, which is bizarre considering I have a strong connection to hip-hop music. Parappa isn't exactly well known for his skillful lyrical wizardry though, which is why when anybody talks about him, they don't really commend his bars very often. Now it's time for the rough fat night, and let's all pump up the night! Waking up was the name of the game, for me, you, 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 and you. Yeah, I, firstly, your brethren there just rhymed night with night, and you attempted to rhyme the word game with the word you, after saying you three other times. Bruv, I don't even know what you're doing. So the lyrics won't grab you, and in a game that contains the word rapper within its title, you wouldn't be wrong for feeling a little short change in that regard. That said, we must be kind to Parappa. It was a simpler time in video games after all, and there wasn't really a big selection of hip hop orientated video games to choose from back then either. To be honest, there still isn't. But I don't think Parappa was ever meant to be perceived as a character who was trying to win your attention with sick lyrics anyway. There's more to his games than just the bars he's throwing at you. Like his storyline, for example. Eh, you should probably expect spoilers. In Parappa the Rapper 1, Parappa has a crush on this girl called Sunny Funny, who is a flower. My man's all about copping himself some sweet nectar, you get me? It's a love story. Parappa the Rapper is basically 8 Mile if 8 Mile got rid of the gritty drama and turned itself into an animated rom-com. Over the course of the first game, he wants to impress Sunny Funny. He believes he'll catch her attention if he learns how to kick some ass, so he takes martial arts lessons from an onion. Then he figures she'll notice him if he was pushing a sick whip, so he learns to drive. He passes his test, but he ends up driving his father's car instead because Rude Boy is broke ass. He then crashed the car and had to get a job to pay for the repairs. Finally, he manages to link the girl but gets nervous, which causes him to get the squits, so he rap battles all his former mentors while waiting in the line to use the toilet. Then they go to a rave and he spits hot fire and everybody loves him and happy endings and yeah, this sounds more like an episode of Spongebob, innit? Maybe Parappa 2 has a more down-to-earth storyline. Parappa the Rapper 2 opens with Parappa complaining he's sick of eating nothing but noodles after having won a hundred years supply of the stuff. While visiting Sunny Funny, she serves him noodles and he was quick to moan about it, forcing Sunny to throw some sass in his face and school the boy. Then he goes to a burger joint called Beard Burger to get some burgers and is then shocked to find out that all the beef burgers are being replaced by noodles. 
that he finds out all the food in town is being replaced by noodles due to an evil military mastermind called Colonel Noodle. Then we sidetrack to watching Parappa and his friend learn romantic karate from Master Onion's TV show, because why the hell not? Then he gets shrunk down due to his father's invention and takes spiritual advice from an ant, because why the hell not? Then he returns to normal size and joins the army, because why the bloody hell not? Afterwards he goes to the barbers, only to find out that the barber is being possessed by a hypnotic video game called Food Court. They reverse engineer the game to find out the weakness of the noodles are sweets and launch a counterattack against Colonel Noodle, who turns out to be the son of the owner of Beard Burgers, who has turned everything to fucking noodles because he got sick of eating beef burgers. Parappa rap battles him, wins, and explains to the guy that there's more to life than noodles, and they all go to a rave, before wrapping up the story with Parappa now becoming sick of cheese after winning a hundred years supply of the stuff. And wait a second, this storyline is more bizarre than the one from the first game. But for all the strange kooky shit that these games throw at you, there's something actually quite heartwarming to be found within the madness. They have a distinct message in these games that it delivers to the player, which I'll get onto a little later on. Visual Design Parappa is presented with a flat 2D style within a 3D space. Since I had not spent much time with this series, I never understood why this bizarre style of presentation was chosen until recently. Apparently the term Parappa in Japanese somewhat translates to the phrase paper thin, so that explains that. Parappa's design itself takes a lot of cues from the lower urban street style of mid-1990s hip-hop, which focused less on bling and expensive brand labels and more on the looseness of the clothing being worn. Back then, baggy was better, so Parappa comes kitted out in a pair of dark blue trousers that are baggy as hell. These types of trousers usually folded in layers over the footwear, which is what is happening here on top of Parappa's red sports shoes. Moving further up the design, the dark blue trousers are accompanied by a light blue sleeveless top, allowing Parappa's beige arms to stick out from his garments and breathe some neutral ground within all the vibrant colours. The whole design is wrapped up with Parappa's head displaying two lopped ears hanging down by the sides of his face from underneath a beanie hat. The beanie hat's design is quite inconsistent as the colour of it tends to change from orange to red depending on if it's in-game or in promotional material. Either that or Parappa just has two different hats that he switches between, which is perfectly fine either way as both colours sit well with the rest of his colour scheme. Though personally, I tend to lean more to the red hat as it combines well with his shoes, but that's just my preference. On the subject of colour, although the palette for his outfit is bright due to the art direction for the series, it actually fits perfectly well within the style of hip-hop. Unlike other types of fashion, hip-hop clothing is notorious for showcasing a wide spectrum of colours. Having Parappa decked out in sharp reds and blues is a perfect fit for a character that sits under the banner of a rapper, especially from the era in which he was conceptualised in. And the fact he wears more than just one solid colour means Parappa isn't lending himself to the hip-hop stereotyping where, if you only wear one colour, you're somehow gang-affiliated. By dressing Parappa in both blues and reds, it cancels out any potential connotations he might have had linking him to groups like the Bloods of the Crips for example, unless he is gang-affiliated and is a double agent between the pair of them. In which case, shame on you, Parappa. Parappa's design is a great but simple representation for that era of hip-hop, and I like the way he looks. He's a small, cartoony time capsule from the golden age of rapping, and should Sony ever decide to revisit this character in a future game, I hope they stick with this design and don't try to modernise him. He's a product of that time, so be sure to keep him that way. Personality Parappa tends to be considered an upbeat character, always displaying a smile in most of his artwork. In fact, one of the things that kinda kept me at arm's length from him was that anytime I saw the character, he always looked a little too wholesome and perfect. I'm all for positivity and spreading a happy mood, but for a long time, Parappa came across to me like someone who didn't have any depth beyond that slapped on smile. From initial glances, he just felt too safe and standard. Boy was I wrong. But don't misunderstand me, he's definitely upbeat and still displays a positive vibe within his games, but one thing I didn't expect when checking out this series was that he's not always like that. He's not constantly running on 100% smiles and rainbows. This guy, as strange as it may seem from a game presented in such a manner, actually goes through difficult times that test the character's mentality. There are numerous points when Parappa falls hard on bad luck, and if it ain't bad luck then it usually comes down to being his own fault for making dumb decisions without really thinking things through. These moments can leave him feeling defeated and low with his self-esteem. There are times in the first game for example when he finds himself pitted against another character, Joe Chin, who is a rival that is also seeking the affections of Sunny Funny. Joe presents himself as a much stronger, well-spoken and confident character, which tends to leave Parappa feeling inferior and overshadowed. He is intimidated by him. 
I would have never guessed Parappa dealt with things like this, but now I understand his tagline a whole lot more. Whenever he finds himself in troubling situations, or he needs to get himself out of a depressing mood, he utters the phrase, I gotta believe, and throws himself into dealing with the issues at hand. For all the weird crazy crap that goes on in these games, from the silly storylines that I mentioned earlier to its bizarre off-the-wall characters, Parappa the Rapper deals with oppressive issues and presents a genuine message of learning to believe in yourself so you can get things done. The message may be on the nose, but it's a message nevertheless, and with Parappa going through these issues himself, it in turn gives depth to a character that I believed had none. It really opened up his personality to me and instantly made him all the more relatable. With Parappa being the title character, he is naturally placed in the most important role. He is the hero of his own story, and even if he screws up the day, he tends to save it later on in the end. As such, being placed in this role means he is connected to pretty much everybody else in the entire cast, from supporting characters to antagonists. The story never really leaves his side either, so we are constantly following Parappa through the narrative, which is to be expected from a character like this. So while there's very little to be said about Parappa's importance to his own universe, I'd like to direct my attention elsewhere, mainly towards the cultural and musical style that this character takes his inspiration from. Hip Hop for those that don't know, hip hop was mostly built on what is often called the four pillars of hip hop. These pillars are graffitiing, breakdancing, DJing, and rapping. Originating from the South Bronx of New York, these four pillars arose out of the oppression to the lower urban class. In its very core essence, it was created as a means to allow people within those societies to find a form of expression for themselves. Its foundations were built on finding something positive within you and bringing that element out. The message was loud and it was powerful. So powerful in fact that it resonated with the rest of the world. And as legendary MC KRS-One once said, Hip Hop is not about being owned by a single race or nationality, it belongs to the world. It belongs to those who need it. And what did we learn about Parappa earlier? He tends to find himself in moments of doubt, with social issues leaning heavy over him. And what does Parappa do to ignite some self-esteem within himself and counter these forms of oppression? He utilizes one of the central pillars of hip-hop. Rapping. He formulates rhymes to tackle the things that test him. It gives him the gateway he needs to believe in himself. I made a few passing jokes within this video that Parappa is not that good of a rapper, but in truth, he doesn't need to be. He doesn't need to spit a set of 16s that blow our minds, that's not why he's here, and that's not why he raps. He could be the worst lyricist in the world if need be, but the fact that Parappa is rapping to better himself is the reason we should appreciate him as an MC. We don't have many video game characters that encapsulate this old homegrown message, and whether it was intentional or not, Parappa is as hip-hop as they come. On the surface, Parappa is an enjoyable little character from a rhythm game that happens to have some crazy stories going on within it. He fits a certain Saturday morning cartoon show mold with his style, and it certainly helps to draw the crowds to him. After all, he gained a cult fanbase, and I have no doubt in my mind that the reason people latched onto him was because he was fun and quite original from a design point of view. He doesn't need to actually be a great rapper for us to feel him either, because the reason behind Parappa spitting lyrics is not to wow us with clever wordplay. He's presenting an age-old message in the most positive and direct form. Express yourself and believe in yourself when you do it. Under the surface, Parappa houses one of the central elements that birthed hip-hop in the first place. Just